Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Level Up Podcast. My name is Mas Mahathir, your host for this podcast. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about how to conquer your negative self-beliefs. Now, I have a special guest here today. Her name is Dr. Jolene Cheng. So she's a PhD holder in personality development and a licensed counsellor. So I don't know anyone better to talk about this topic other than Dr. Jolene Cheng. So welcome to the show, Dr. Jolene. Thank you so much, Mas Mahadir, for having me here. And today, our topic is about conquering negative beliefs. I'm pretty sure that all of us here have some sort of negative beliefs, right? I'm pretty sure you have too, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Even yourself, you have joined a lot of public speaking competitions, competitions after competitions. I'm pretty sure you have some sort of negative beliefs that are holding you back. Can you share with us some of the negative beliefs? Definitely, I think I do have those negative beliefs. And one of the biggest negative beliefs that I personally face is what do people think Ugh. of me? Yeah, And this could be in the form of are they reacting the way I want them to? Or are they judging me? So these kind of things actually impact performance. And I believe that in whatever we do, performance is key. If we perform at our lowest level, we are not going to be able to give the best value or de deliver things in the best way possible. So definitely this negative belief impacts a lot. Yeah, And I personally do face that myself. So what about you, Dr. Jolene? Well... I can understand totally from your point of view. Sometimes when we about to do something, especially for you when you go on stage, you have this negative belief that is actually holding you back. For sure. But what's interesting is that I believe there are certain advantages as well when it comes to negative belief. So let's just go back a little bit more. When you have this type of negative belief, will people laugh? What do people think of me? What kind of actions do you take? What kind of actions do I take? I just do it anyway, <laughs> do whatever that's rehearsed and then I just present whatever I've prepared already. Yes, absolutely. So I'm pretty sure that you're trying to refine your speech in a way to make people laugh, to mm. make people connect better. So there's actually certain advantages when it comes to having negative thoughts. But like you mentioned, we don't want those negative thoughts to actually deter our performance, to negatively impact our performance. And yes, mm. myself as well. I do have certain negative beliefs. I have the qualifications. I have the certificates. I have the experiences. But there are times whereby I felt like I'm not good enough to do this. Or am I good enough to actually do this? And this type of thing, this type of negative belief that we feel, there are many names for it. And one of it is called the imposter syndrome. Whereby you feel like a fake someone who is not real. It's very, very common. In fact, a lot of executives were reported that they feel this way sometime in their life. I think most people, they, they found it as, or rather they call it as the Dunning-Kruger effect, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So basically, just to add some light here, a Dunning-Kruger effect is the imposter syndrome, like what Dr. Jolene shared, where people who they are at that level where they do have the necessary experiences, they still feel that they are not up to that level yet. So they feel lesser than what they have. But on the flip side, those who do not have the experience or the level, they actually feel that they are much better than they think they are. Yeah, so I think this is what the Dunning-Kruger effect was talking about. That's, that's actually really, really true. There's this research that is being conducted among people who have high self-esteem and lower self-esteem. And when they did this research, they found that people with lower self-esteem are actually higher performing than people with higher self-esteem. This is actually really, really interesting. Mm. So I'd like to ask this question to Dr. Jolene. Yeah? So why do you think people are holding on to these negative beliefs? You know, they know that it impacts their performance. They know that it's detrimental to their growth, correct? So why do people still hold on to this? Two reasons. First, nature. We are living things. We all try to survive. We're trying to defend ourselves. So it's natural to have certain negative beliefs to protect ourselves. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm afraid to go out because I'm afraid that I'll catch COVID-19 and die. 
So we can consider this as part of negative belief, but the intention is good, it's to protect ourselves. So therefore, nature. And secondly, it could be due to environment. We could possibly grow up in a household, a school environment, whereby there are too much negativity. And again, all negativity has a good intention to it. But what is the consequences? What are the consequences? And what kind of price are we paying for being so negative? That's true. So if we were to take one step back, perhaps you could share with me what are some typical negative beliefs that people actually have? What do you think? Well, if we to actually go in much more detail, negative beliefs comes from irrational thoughts. And there are three types of irrational thoughts. First one, forecasting. You try to predict something that's going to happen in the future, although nothing is confirmed yet, although it has not happened yet. For example, if I go out now, I will die from COVID-19. Number two is self-defeat. So self-defeat is whereby you criticize yourself negatively. For example, instead of taking that opportunity, you have self-defeat thoughts such as, I'm not good enough. I don't have the necessary experience. And last but not least is the mind reading. Mind reading is whereby you try to read people's faces and try to assume what they are thinking. For example, if someone doesn't reply your text, you assume that that person don't like me. But what if that person is busy? So to sum it up, Negative thoughts can come from irrational beliefs and irrational beliefs can be broken down into three Forecasting, self-defeat and also mind reading There's also one interesting thing that I learned in psychology and this is uh, something that I've learned quite a while back and this particular thing really got me thinking We were thinking or rather we were learning about something called the self-fulfilling prophecy yeah, in psychology, self-fulfilling prophecy is basically you believe in something or rather you keep talking about it, thinking it, believing it, and then eventually it happens. So if we keep thinking that, oh my goodness, is my audience going to be um, horrible or am I going to be terrible? And then we start thinking it and pondering about it. I'm going to be terrible. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it on stage well. I'm not going to be confident on stage. And then when it actually happens, we believe that, you see, that is exactly what it is. I was not confident. I end up not being confident. And that's what self-fulfilling prophecy is. So if we actually hold on to these negative beliefs for too long and something actually happens, it is all starting or the root point is because of where we start thinking about this, right? And don't let these negative beliefs actually make it into a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I think it's really important for all of us to know here. Now, let's move on to the next question. I like to talk about how do you think this actually negatively apply or rather impact younger children because they are our future generation they are the people who will be able to help us change the nature of where we are right now so how do negative beliefs actually affect them what do you think well negative belief actually affect them obviously in a negative manner when a child thinks that i'm not good enough i can't do this they will not raise their hand to ask teacher on what they don't know about. And if they do not take the initiative to ask the teacher to ask for help, they end up lagging more and more behind. So which is why if a kid has low self-esteem, they will miss out on so many other opportunities in their life. Mm, definitely. So if adults are suffering that way and they already lost a lot of opportunities, imagine if you taught this or rather the child learns about negative self-beliefs at a younger age. How much more opportunities would they actually lose out in future? So that's why I believe that if we are able to conquer these negative beliefs and for those listening right now, maybe you could share this podcast out to people that you know, uh, people that you care about so that they will be able to overcome this together and imagine what kind of opportunities that they will be able to overcome or be able to achieve if they were able to get rid of these negative self-beliefs. So I think Dr. Jolene here shared quite a good insight over here. Now, I do have another question here that I'd like to ask Dr. Jolene as well. Most people talk about growth mindset and fixed mindset. And I think this is a really common topic that most people talk about. Sometimes we are taught about this in schools, universities. So how do you think this will be able to help people to overcome their negative self-beliefs? Growth mindset and fixed mindsets are obviously long-time concepts. 
most people have already heard of it, definitely. But the thing, of, the thing is, do we actually practice it? That's the real question. When you face an obstacle, do you think that, nah, I'm just not good at this, therefore I'm just not going to do this, or I'm not fit for this, or I'm not meant for this. So that is a fixed mindset. Growth mindset is, I know it's going to be difficult, I know it's going to be challenging, but I'm going to try, I'm going to be fantastic, I'm going to come out from this. So that's growth mindset. And many successful people that I know, they're already on top there. We see them as industrial experts. We see them as industrial leaders, millionaires, property developers, entrepreneurs, CEOs. They're already out there. But when I, when I speak to them, they're very humble. They're so humble that it's unbelievable. And I guess that's why they got to where they are because of this. Even if they're the expert at something, they'll ask more questions, but not in a condescending way, out of curiosity. They want to understand from your perspective, and most of them are fantastic listeners. Mm, definitely, I think that's the reason why they are CEOs themselves, you know? Successful people do tend to have the way of removing negative self-beliefs, and I believe people like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, you, if you see a lot of their talks, whether it is in the podcast, a TED talk and all that, they always strive to talk about one important thing first. And to become successful, it all starts with the mindset. So it's really important to conquer those negative self-beliefs. Now, moving on to the next question that I like to ask is, what is positive thinking and what is not positive thinking? Most of the time, people think that it's totally okay when someone is feeling super low or super, uh, you know, they're just not there in the right mindset, right? And they keep talking about a lot of negative self-beliefs. People think that it's as easy as telling them, step out of it, right? Change your behavior. Think of the positive side of it. And I don't think that this era, it works anymore. Maybe in the past, people are able to do that and get away with it. But in this era, there's an underlying deep root of issues that we do need to overcome. Right, so maybe Dr. Jolene can share with us what is positive thinking and what is not positive thinking. Positive thinking is whereby you're trying to convince yourself to look at things in a more brighter manner. And when you're able to look at, at the brighter manner, you're able to feel better. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It depends on the context. For example, if you need an instant boost, you can just say, I can do it, you can do it, let's do it together. That is if, if the boost is short term and you just need that short term uplift. But what if it is something deep rooted? For example, a family issue and they have certain mindset towards a certain family member. We can't say things like just be positive, just be grateful. That person will feel even worse. So sometimes, too much positivity can lead to toxic positivity. Which means that you're trying to be positive, but instead of making that person feel better, you actually make them feel worse. Mm, correct. And I think that most of the uh, people, parents especially, right, when they have to deal with children, maybe they don't know the necessary steps or the techniques to actually share with the kids and if they are facing certain form of negative self-belief, a lot of times parents would just say, uh, get over it or, you know, do something positive or say something positive. So in that sense, the child doesn't really learn how to overcome it, but rather putting a plaster on those pain and just live through it. But in the future, those things can actually come back out. Those negative self-beliefs will still be there. So how do you think parents should handle this situation? What can they do so that we can help the younger generation to also get out of this negative self-belief? That's a very, very good question. So instead of putting that plaster on that deep wound, what parents can actually do is to try to understand where the child is coming from. For example, if the child refuses to probably go to a class, what the parents can do is try to understand why do you feel like that? By truly understanding why a child feels like that, instead of scolding them immediately, gives the child the opportunity to express themselves. But at the same time, while trying to play the good parent, the good parent should also call out a child if the parent knows that the child is lying. Mm, 
All right, so parents out there who are listening here, or if you have a kid, I think this is a very good advice, and definitely from Dr. Jolin Cheng here. Now, my final question is for people, yeah, for anyone, anyone who's just listening to this right now, a lot of us do have negative self-belief. I believe it's maybe one thing, two things, or a million things. And how do we actually instill it in ourselves or rather practice this on a daily basis so that we can get out of this negative self-belief, so that we can start seizing opportunities and don't let those things hold us down. What do you think we can do? Well, actually, when it comes to coaching sessions or therapy, there are many, many techniques. But the key takeaway here, I would summarize it to two. Number one, identify what are your strengths. When you are able to identify what are your strengths and to list them all out, you're able to see that it is part of your resources and what kind of resources that you have in order to overcome your challenges. So first, strength identification. Secondly, look at things from a third person point of view. What is the pros of having this negative belief? What is the cons of having this negative belief? Let me share with you an example. I'm afraid of going to speak in public, for example, to give a speech. The pros of that is that I know that I'm not good enough. Therefore, I need to take up some courses, probably get a coach or a mentor, or probably just practice more. That is the pros, recognizing my self-limitation. But the cons of being so obsessed with this belief is that it makes me feel paralyzed. I don't progress. I procrastinate. So by being able to, number one, identify a strength, number two, view things from a third person point of view, as well as weigh the pros and cons, I believe that we are able to move forward from our negative belief. That's a very good point there. And just to add on a little bit on what Dr. Jolene shared, is that one of the few things that I've learned is how do you reframe the mindset, especially when you are facing with negative self-beliefs, Sometimes it is very good to, to acknowledge it. And when you acknowledge it, you actually find a way to reframe it in a way that actually makes it beneficial for you. And one simple way to add that is to just add the word yet at the end of your negative self-belief. It's as simple as that. For example, I'm not good. What do you do? Add a yet. I can't do this. Add a yet. I can't do this yet. I'm not rich. Add a yet, I'm not rich yet. So all these kind of ways that you do, you can actually now see it from a different point of view and you start seizing that opportunity rather than seeing it as a form of limitation. Yeah? So thank you so much everyone for tuning in to the Level Up Podcast episode one on how to conquer your negative self-belief. And I believe here today that Dr. Jolin Cheng has shared with us so many valuable insights and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode in the Level Up series. So thank you so much everyone for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.